Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 18 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future videos. I hope you're still safe uh, wherever you are. As for me, things are improving where I live, so I can actually go out a little bit and sit in front of the house. In this episode, we're going to talk about AWS news, as usual, high-level services, deep learning containers, and so on. And I'm going to do a demo on transcribe profanity filtering again so uh, make sure the kids are not in front of the screen let's get started as usual let's start with the high level services the first feature i want to talk about is a feature in amazon forecast amazon forecast is a managed service that lets you easily build forecasting models for time series and this is actually a very useful feature here. Uh, it's going to uh, automatically fill in missing data in your time series and the related time series. So um, you can select from uh, different techniques like uh, median, min, max, etc. And any missing or uh, not a number value uh, in the time series is going to be automatically fixed. And this is really important because time series are very, very sensitive to, to missing values. So this works with the target value itself, so the actual variable that you want to uh, predict. And it also works with a related time series. As you probably know, forecast lets you add additional uh, information on top of the time series you want to predict. So if you're talking about retail, it could be stock information, price information, etc. So if you have missing values in those, well, uh, now you can automatically uh, replace them as well. So um, this is a very nice feature. It should help you increase the accuracy of your models without any pre-processing. The next one is a Code Guru feature. So Code Guru again is a managed service that uh, does two things. Uh, it automatically reviews your code using the the pull request workflow, and it identifies uh, potential problems in your code security issues, performance issues, etc. So that's Code Guru Reviewer. And there's also a profiler module, so Code Guru Profiler, that inspects your application while they're running in production and, um, and gives you performance reports and helps you pinpoint potential performance problems. So here uh, we're talking about a new reviewer feature where you can connect Bitbucket repositories to Code Review, uh, Code Guru Reviewer. So here we're talking about a reviewer feature where you can connect your Bitbucket repos to CodeGuru. Um, initially, you could uh, you could use uh, uh, CodeCommit and GitHub, I believe. So now we can use Bitbucket as well. Okay, pretty nice. All right, and the next one is uh, vocabulary filtering again. So you may remember uh, in a past episode I showed you this feature that was available on Transcribe, our uh, speech-to-text service. It was available in batch mode, and now it's available in real-time mode. So you know what I'm gonna do, right? Uh, so again, this is not safe for work. This is not safe for kids. Please uh, turn the volume down if you don't have a headset, and, uh, and make sure uh, no one is gonna be offended by what I say here, okay? But again, I'm French, so I can't help being offensive. Uh, it's in my DNA, I guess. So the way this works is you just go to the Amazon Transcribe console, you select real-time transcription, and uh, we can pick from English and Spanish, but uh, I can curse pretty well in English, but not in Spanish, so I'm gonna go for English. And we wanna go to additional settings and enable vocabulary filtering, okay? And we select a vocabulary filter so it's a, a profanity uh, list of words and um, and I uploaded it already here okay and no I'm not going to open that file because um, you know I don't think that's uh, you're, you're gonna get enough in 30 seconds so basically one word per line uh, that you want to um, uh, either highlight or remove from the output right so we can mask it I'm gonna go for that we can remove the, the word or we can tag it and just leave it in the transcript 
but tag it as a, as a word that should be filtered. Okay, so we're gonna go for mask and I'm using the Ireland region here. Okay, let's allow my mic. Good morning. My name is Julian. And I'm really, really tired of talking to you, motherfucker. I'm really, really tired of dealing with such an asshole. You feed me so much crap and so much bullshit. All right, I think that's enough. All right, so I could go on for a few hours, but you get the ID. So, um, so this is really, really simple to use. Again, just uh, upload your um, your filter, one word per line in a text file, and off you go. Right. So now available in streaming mode as well as batch mode. So uh, profanity filtering, and um, and any any unwanted word you can just highlight or uh, or mask. So. Pretty good. Another really cool feature from the transcribe team. Well done, guys. Okay, uh, let's move on to deep learning containers. And this team has been on fire. What's going on with you guys? They released uh, a bunch of updates in, in very rapid fashion. So the first one is uh, PyTorch 1.5 is available in deep learning containers. Uh, as well as TensorFlow 115.2 with Python 3.7, right? So Python update. Uh, TensorFlow 2.2 is now available, the, the brand new version. And they also added Elastic Inference support for TensorFlow and PyTorch um, for more recent versions of TensorFlow and PyTorch, namely PyTorch 1.3.1, TensorFlow 115 and TensorFlow 2.0, right? Uh, Elastic inference support requires extra work. So, um, so usually you'll see the newer frameworks popping up in the deep learning containers and then they get updated to uh, Elastic inference um, uh, pretty quickly. And I wanna take the opportunity to uh, talk about deep learning containers again. Um, there are AWS managed containers for the most popular deep learning libraries. You can run them on, uh, on EC2, you can run them on uh, cluster services, ECS, EKS, you can run them on SageMaker, and I think they're terrific. I think they save you from building and managing your own containers. And of course, you can find those, uh, those containers on GitHub as well, so you can go and, and, and build them yourself and inspect them and customize them, run them on your own um, server, your own lap laptop if you want to. And uh, if you've never looked at this and, and you train deep learning models, I really sincerely think you're missing out. Um, they are extremely, extremely useful. And I wanna talk about Elastic Inference again because uh, it looks like there are still a bunch of uh, uh, customers who've never heard about it. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, it, it has a lot of value. So what Elastic Inference is, is basically the ability to add fractional GPU acceleration to any instance. So you can apply that to EC2 instances, uh, notebook instances in SageMaker and SageMaker endpoints. And what I mean by fractional GPU acceleration is for some models, CPU prediction is too slow and GPU prediction is required. But maybe your model or your, your use case doesn't fully use that GPU instance. So maybe you're paying for, let's say a P3 instance or a G4 instance and you don't keep the GPU busy enough. So sure, it's fast, but when you look at uh, uh, the, the cost uh, performance ratio, you know, it's not the best. And you know, that's a problem for us because we want, we want you to get the most bang for the buck. So for those use cases where CPU is too slow and GPU is too much acceleration, that's when you gotta look at Elastic Inference. And uh, that service came out a while ago uh, with Elastic Inference Accelerators, first generation, now we have a second generation. And so you can use those and benchmark your application and find the, the, the cost performance ratio that you want. So again, this is available on EC2. We have extended TensorFlow and, uh, and, and, and PyTorch um, and uh, MXNet uh, libraries 
to to support that. So we have uh, we have uh, AWS maintained packages and extensions for those libraries. Uh, we have a version of TensorFlow Serving, etc., that's uh, that supports Elastic Inference, and of course it's available on SageMaker. So I want to quickly walk you through a simple example just to show you how easy it is to test and uh, and how, how quickly you could realize some serious savings. So here, and it's one of my go-to examples, I'm training um, a, a convolutional neural network on, on the fashion MNIST data set using TensorFlow uh, 2.0 in this, in this example. So it's an image classification problem, 10 classes, etc. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this before. So it's, it's a vanilla notebook. I download the data set. I use, um, I use a Keras uh, model here to, uh, to predict this. So uh, I pile up some uh, Keras layers for convolution, etc., etc. I use script mode to get hyperparameters and, and uh, extra training information. I mean, nothing different. I mean, you, I've probably shown you this 10 times already. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a vanilla Keras code adapted for script mode on SageMaker. And at the end, of course, we save the model. Okay, so I upload my data set to S3, training set, validation set, and I can train on a GPU instance. So here I use the TensorFlow estimator by seeing my script. I train on a G4 DNXL instance, which is the, the uh, most cost effective GPU instance that we have today, still quite powerful. Okay, so I train for 10 epochs and, uh, and there we go, you know, we see the model we trained for about 400 seconds and then we want to deploy okay so of course here it's a tiny model so it, it would just run fine on a cpu but let's say we need gpu prediction for this so you would look at the at the pricing and you would say okay well the the the, the most cost effective instance type is g4 dnxl uh, for example in eu west it costs um 0.822 dollars per hour okay and, and I'm gonna run that. But maybe looking at the CloudWatch metrics for the endpoint, maybe you see, um, you know, the GPU is 20 or 30% busy. It never goes up to 200% because you're predicting at low volume and, uh, and you don't need that much performance anyway. So the alternative is to do this, as you can see here, using the deploy API still, I'm going to deploy on a CPU instance, so C5 large, uh, which is again, very cost effective. And I'm going to add uh, an elastic inference accelerator. So they come in three sizes, medium, large, X large. Each size gives you a certain number of teraflops. And, um, and when we're going to predict with our model, um, the, of course the CPU instance is going to run the Python part uh, it's going to run the, the prediction container but the actual prediction the model prediction is going to run on the elastic accelerator okay and if you add up those two prices you see we have uh, you know a fraction of the g4dn cost right which probably uh, yeah maybe uh, you know it's uh, at least two-thirds cheaper okay um, and you're going to get, uh, you know, you're going to get good performance. So maybe medium is a little too slow still for you. So maybe you want to try large. So you would just say, hey, we're going to deploy on large and benchmark again. But for those use cases, you will get a very significant discount. Now, maybe it's going to be 30%, maybe it's going to be 50, maybe it's going to be 70%, but you're going to save a ton of money compared to using a full-fledged GPU instance, especially if you run those endpoints 24-7 for a month. I mean, we're talking hundreds of dollars per instance per month. So that's serious money you can save by just trying this and experimenting with this. And then we just predict just like we would predict, right? We call the predict API on the endpoint and, uh, and it works just fine, right? Again here, it's a tiny model. So uh, performance read doesn't matter, but uh, for a more significant model, you could find the exact level of performance and cost that works for you. Again, you could save hundreds of bucks per month per instance if you do that right. So I think it's worth uh, trying it out. All right, that's it for this episode. And uh, I really want to apologize for that demo on profanity filtering. My evil twin made me do it. I'm, I'm not responsible in any way. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe for more news and more silly demos, I'm sure. And stay safe until I see you 
keep rocking.